we could, Lord. Everything is here? I got the bill of lading right here, sir, and everything that's here is checked off. Is everything here? They back ordered the uh, TV and the stereo. I uh, guess they ordered those directly from Japan. TV? Radio? What the hell is that? Well, sir, it's more than just a radio. Uh, you see, it's got a 100-watt receiver and four big speakers about the size of radiators. What is this, Warden? Captain, I can assure you it wasn't I who requisitioned the television or the stereo system. I thought surely a little sort of wrap-around transistor type of stereo... A Walkman. A Walkman would have sufficed, but someone down at the ACLU or someplace got wind at the thing and demanded we provide all the creature comforts of home. I didn't disagree, Captain, because that is what this experiment is all about. So we have the stereo system complete and the television arriving sometime soon, but apparently not in time for our first, should I dare say, occupant father. Inmate on death row, guinea pig, cook goose, whatever you want to call him is fine. So flip father. At any rate, Fred, you said everything that should be here is here? Yes, sir, and if you'll just sign this thing, uh, Fred and me can leave. I thought you were Fred. Well, I am Fred, but he's Fred too. That's why we call ourselves Two Freds Moving Company. <laughs> so what is this I'm, I'm signing, Fred? Freddy? It's uh, the bill of lading, sir. It says that uh, everything's here and that we didn't break anything, and that, uh, well, everything's here, and, and if it isn't, it ain't our fault. <laughs> Are you in a hurry, Freddy? Hospitals and prisons, warden, sir, give me the creeps. But this isn't supposed to be a prison, Freddy. This is supposed to be like a home. This is supposed to make the last days of a man who is to be executed more comfortable. To make his final hours so pleasant he won't mind being injected with a lethal dose of poison. Or at the very least take his mind off of it for a while. This is supposed to be like a home. Well, sir, it's, it's making me feel a little faint. A little cloudy, for sure. And you still feel like it's a prison? Well, it's beginning to feel that way if you won't sign this thing. <laughs> well, I can't go around signing everything that's shoved into my face. I'll have to put a call into the governor. This is state money we're spending. I beg your pardon, warden, sir, but if you're going to put a stay of execution on your signature, uh, you're going to give me a heart attack for certain. Don't worry, son. I'm here. Last rites and all that. Warden, please. Well, what the hell, Freddy? If something goes wrong, we can always blame Congress. Thank you, sir. Where are you off to in such a hurry, anyhow? I give tours over the canyon in my little Cessna every day around sunset. And uh, Freddie here, he owns a chain of uh, dance studios. Uh, just a little side work, you know, <laughs> uh, keep our heads above water. I see. Well, goodbye. You do a lot of work for the state, do you, Freddie? Uh, we can't complain, sir. I imagine you don't. Thank you, sir. Come on, Freddie. Well, I have to get back to my office, but I guess I'll be back sometime soon. Captain, is there anything else you need me for? I don't think so, sir. I'll be back soon. Okay, Henry, as quick as you can, give me the dope on this guy coming in here. He's a uh, male, Caucasian, uh, 30 years old. His name is uh, James Magnum, uh, Jim Magnum. He went by the nickname Crow. Now, whether that's Jim Crow or Crow Magnum, I don't know. All right, all right. Well, he, uh, he never had a, well, as far as we can know, he never was arrested. Uh, never was in any trouble. Uh, never did anything. Just a guy waiting to snap? What was he, fired from his job? What they call him? Disgruntled employees. They get fired from their job, then they go and shoot up the place. Oh, he was a disgruntled driver. A what? Well, some lady went through a red light. She didn't even hit him. She just missed him. So he gets out of the car. Uh, she had stopped because of, well, I don't know why. She was just there. And he gets out of the car and uh, starts shooting up the traffic light. She walks up to him and says, don't take it out on the street light. It was my fault. <laughs> so he shoots her in the face. Why? <laughs> because uh, he recognized the veracity of her statement. What do I know why? <laughs> didn't mean why. I mean, why do these things have to happen? never felt any remorse, and he uh, never had a predilection for improving himself, so they tried him and uh, found him guilty. He rejected every offer of free counsel, and so he's here. All went pretty fast, very fast, actually. He shot that woman just over 
seven years ago. He didn't feel it was necessary to appeal? Maybe he just wants to die. Some people just don't like life. He was just an animal. He was that day. Anything else? No, nothing. Uh, he's been incarcerated at Pueblo Valley for six and a half years. He, he's been a model prisoner. <laughs> you know what I think? He'll come here, he'll die, you'll make the front page of the paper, and that'll be that. Don't joke him. Well, what I'm trying to say is that you should... Well, what you shouldn't do is worry about the prisoner. Worry about everybody else, but not him. What you should be doing when the governor gets here, when the paparazzi come in, you should try to sell the idea. You should uh, let everybody know that we're trying to do some good here. That we are, as a, as a correctional facility, not only moving into the future, we're, we're creating the future. Creating the future. I like that. Creating the future. Capital punishment. The death penalty is not going away, right? What I envision... And what is. we're trying to do is, is make it more palatable so that the bean sprout and moccasin crowd aren't knocking on our doors all the time. Henry, please. These people have their convictions. I know. You know what's going to happen? Come Friday morning, they're just going to start calling us callous murderers all over again. So we've just got to be ready to face up to the music. And I have to meet the governor. Do you like the room, Henry? I haven't seen it. you like the idea of the room, Henry? Sir, I wouldn't care if for the last 48 hours of that guy's life, they put a pail over his head and banged on it with a wooden spoon. <laughs> I have to meet the governor. Do I look all right? You look fine. <coughs> Will either empower 
or disempower her as she sees fit. So what you're saying is that if a woman does not have an abortion, she's allowing herself to be disempowered? I'm saying that. Yeah, you're being a precise governor. I'm talking about after the abortion, Ray, you know that. If a woman has an abortion and feels that it is wrong, she can devote every waking hour of her life to the so-called pro-life movement. That's fine. That's her right. She could also devote her life to reckless promiscuity because she feels relieved of all responsibility for, or finally, all reverence for life at all. That would be disempowering. Are you telling us that sexual freedom for women will lead to disenfranchisement? I'm saying that chronic detachment from personal commitment between human beings will cause irreparable harm to the social structure, yes. Ray, how did we get on this topic? Let me end it by saying that I am not a woman, and therefore I must try to protect something that they are so obviously and so overwhelmingly in favor of. Phil, please? Tell us about the cell work. This cell is the result of years of study, of close scrutiny to the needs of the incarcerated and to the physical and emotional wants of a man who knows his life is coming to an end. Well, how did you arrive at three days, Morden? How did you decide that that was the right amount of time for the prisoner to stay here? I believe that uh, Father Dingle could, well, well, I believe it has a biblical connotation, does it not, Father? I certainly hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that the warden doesn't just surround himself with mere yes men, that's for sure. <laughs> Father Dingle is a turn-the-other-cheek kind of fellow. Oh, well, I'd go an eye for an eye. But you have to remember when that was written, and I was really worth something. Mm -hmm. Capital punishment is inflation at its worst. A devalued society, right, Father? Uh, more questions, please. What will you be injecting the prisoner with, Warden? We heard it was new. Uh, I don't have the scientific, the chemical term for it, not here. But basically what it is is a sort of two-pronged injection. The first part, the hallucinogenic part, puts the participant into a very trance-like state. The journey is very picaresque, very tranquil. Basically what the developers were able to do, of course, is separate the two active components of the drug, the hallucinogenic part, and the ingredient that brings that particular chemically induced journey to an end. Believe me when I tell you that this drug is better tested than most baby foods. Uh, had, and this, this goes back to uh, Frampton Comes Alive, we had truckloads of hash. I mean truckloads by the bush. And nothing happened. And um, I had this old knapsack I used to drag around from arena to arena following Aerosmith. Full of mescaline. Nothing. Doing window pane with Jerry and the dead after that incredible concert in Saratoga. <laughs> Later that night, I, I broke into the racetrack, pretended I was secretariat. Shooting up heroin with Lou Reed. Just me and Lou. Walking the wild side. And the colored girls say, do, 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 do. And we'd score crap openly on the streets in support of the dissident Chinese students and the dispossessed people of the, of the uh, crumbling Soviet bloc. I've often wondered if you could get high on Novocaine. You know, <laughs> just mainline it and get all numb and tingly all over. That might be kind of good. <laughs> but anyway, all of this stuff, all of this stuff was like nothing. It's like rocking in a rocking chair compared to that stuff the government gave me. What a wild motherfucking ride! <laughs> and the government gave me that shit, man! <laughs> and paid me to take it! Shit, I don't know. Go figure. I always thought the government was the big bad wolf. No, they're right there with you all along. And if some old hippie, some street bum, continues to make these wild allegations, we will not only continue to de deny the reports, but may consider further criminal prosecution as well. Sir, Your Honor, the prisoner is scheduled to arrive at any moment. I think the reporter should be removed or at least sectioned off because there's going to be enough pandemic. I agree. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to take some pictures, you're going to have to move outside now. We can't get him in here. Prisoner is going to be unchained. He's going to have to be free to move around when he's here. After all, that is his cell. 
So please, for the safety of everybody. We can't get him coming in. He might be coming in at any moment. Can we quickly get some shots no, of the No, please. That won't be allowed. That's the room. That's the place. My God. What, what is he going to eat, Warden? Whatever he wants. He's going to be supervised. Every day, every night, around the clock. I'm going to pray with him, Father. Pray with him? I don't think so, no. If he wants to talk with me, if he wants me to pray for him, my office will be available to him. You think he's beyond help, Father? Not beyond extending his life expectancy. Whether he goes to heaven or hell is not up to me. It looks like he'll be enjoying a little bit of paradise before he goes, though. You think this will be a popular place, Warden? I won't answer that. So you won't stay as execution, Governor. Governor! It's time. No! 7 a.m. Friday morning! Because you think you'll look too wishy-washy or because you really think you should die? I mean, he isn't the worst criminal you've got in here. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. We really have to get going. Are Captain there any, Are there any conjugal business, Warden? No, there will be no conjugal business allowed. But this is a rehabilitation center, isn't it, Father? Not a hot tub in the Poconos. All right, that's it. Let's move it, people. No more questions. No more cracking lies. No more pictures. God damn, lava savages. Jeez. Governor? Your Honor? Huh? We're down here, yes? Oh, uh, Captain Oak? We have everything all set. Prisoners being escorted now by Sergeant Dinmar. Very good. Very good. We're off to a good start, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, Joe? I'll be back at 6.30 to speak to the prisoner. I know you're all right. Thank you, sir. Father, good day to you both. Governor, how do you? Magnum? 
What is this, roll call? Is that your name? What difference does it make now? Fuck you. Murder. Fuck you, man. Alright, I don't care, I guess. You care if I read any of this? Not in the least. It's not legal, is it, Denmark? There's no legality about any of this, just the formality. You got a lawyer? You want to talk about any of this? What? You got a lawyer? No. Nervous never sees my father. Magnum. This is Sergeant Denmark. He's going to be keeping an eye on you for me. Okay. This is Father Dingle. He's going to be keeping an eye on you for someone else. Have you met? We have not. If you need either of these men, just ask. Denmark will get you cigarettes from the canteen and just about anything else you need. You can use Father Dingle in any capacity that you want. This is where you're going to stay for the next three days until you're ordered execution by the state. On April 1 at 7 a.m., here's a pamphlet Willowbreeze has printed up, written by a very prominent psychiatrist for you to better understand the room and how it can help you. Hey, Captain. You know why you never see any nigger priests? They like to fuck too much. You shut your foul mouth or I'll ram this so far down your throat, you'll... You'll what? Get off me, you black bastard! You get real comfortable in here now. Before you die. Father Dingle, do you have anything else to say? Only if the young man has anything to say to me. If I need you, will you come over any time? Hold me tight in the middle of the night? I bet you'd like that. I'll come down if you need me. It's difficult and hard as it may imagine, Magnum. The prison cook is going to be down to see if there's anything that you want. A book to read, or... Well, forget it then. I suppose you should have done your reading a long time ago. That's a real shot. Denmark, you got anything to add? Not worth it, sir. Tough fucking sarcasm, huh, everybody? So, you got a deal? Definite? From the warden? He owes me a favor. A definite favor? Uh, I'm in, believe me. Warden, the governor, all those fucking guys owe me a favor. Anything we can press for reasons for these favors? So what's the angle going to be? Is going to do something new? What are these? They're fugu cookies. Japanese blowfish cookies. Take one. Very funny. What are they? They're for top of the table water crackers. Didn't they have to take these off the shelf about a year ago? Weren't they using bad flour or something? Oh, don't worry about that. I bought these two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let the local news carry it. Let the guy sing his black heart out on videotape. 
From what I understand, I didn't fall in love with him deeply enough by the third date. <laughs> you know how men are. You go out with them more than once, and they go all whimpery and shit, and they expect you to go all whimpery and shit. I guess I'm not that sentimental. Were you sleeping with him? Of course I was sleeping with him, Sid. Well, that's the problem. People have sex too early in their relationships nowadays, and then they think that everything is all right. No, it isn't that. I guess I just don't want to be happy. You don't? I'm intimidated by happiness. So what are you going to do, write an angry piece? <laughs> no, I don't want to write an angry piece. I'd like to write something beautiful that will last. <laughs> May I take your order? What? May I take your order? I'll be your waiter tonight. My name is Octane. I didn't ask for you. But they just sent me down here. And to tell you the truth, I didn't really want to come. I'm only in this joint for writing bad checks. And I have to tell you, violent people aren't my cup of tea. <laughs> if you'll pardon the food metaphor. What are you talking about? You just tell me what you want to eat, I'll go back to the kitchen and make it for you. Then you can eat it. It's as uh, historical as that. You want some jumbo prawns? I don't want no fucking jumbo prawns. I'm authorized to make you anything you like. I don't want anything. Go away. You don't want to eat? I don't want to eat. Or is it? <clears throat> and this is what I sense, that you don't want me to fix your food. Now, which one is it, really? That's right. I want you to keep your paws off my food. A lot of the prisoners in here don't like the idea of a black man touching their food. I mean, a lot of the murderers and the rapists and the pedophiles don't like the very idea of a clean, well-educated black man putting a muffin down on their tray. It upsets the balance of things. That's right. <laughs> you can stick that muffin up your ass. Ooh, safe sex. <laughs> I want nothing. I don't want anything to eat. I don't want anything to drink. I don't want a fucking thing. I sure as hell don't want you. Tough guy. You're so fucking stupid, aren't you? You just play like a fucking idiot right into their games and torture, don't you? You're a crazy man, they said. You're getting them to do their job, you see? If I eat, if I enjoy myself in here, then they got to me. They finally get some satisfaction for taking me out because I'm wishing I wasn't going to go. You understand? No. This isn't my fucking home. And you're not giving no... It isn't fucking food you're giving me. Because it's like they're trying to make me miss these things. Because they know I don't give a fuck. If I eat... It's gonna torture me just a little bit more before they kill me, man. I think they were trying to be kind. Well, Octane, you're wrong. So I don't want no water, nothing. I'm gonna sit here and smoke till I can't breathe. I'm gonna jerk myself off until I'm raw. Until blood and death spurts out of my cock, man, to show them what they're doing here is absolutely worthless. I've got others to cook you a meal. Eat it yourself. I may just do that. I don't want to see you again. God! In fact, it's like you will never understand. God! Bang it! Go! There's a reporter coming down here to talk to Magnum at 2 o'clock. Just got off the phone with the warden. He says she can have all the time she wants with him. She can have him with him alone. Have you seen this? What? Elephants. These poachers are chopping off. Look. They slice off the whole face just to get the, you know, because these guys, they need the, the horns, the fucking horns. The horns? You know what I'm talking about. The horns, the bones. Those big fucking, they curve out like this, and they get them in a tournament of rings and bracelets, and uh, they tie them. The tusks. Yeah, the tusks. <laughs> we know what I was talking about all along. Everybody's all upset. The government, you know, fucking moolies in the jungle. The moolies? You know. People in the jungle, the savages, the naked people. You're not a movie, Captain. Then what am I? You're just like a white guy. But what I was trying to say was, they're trying to save the elephant, and what I want to know, what good is an elephant? What good is an elephant? Do you eat them? Do they plow fields? I've seen people riding them, but what is it that they do? They can get them things turned into, you know, beautiful things like nice earrings, nice painting, that's worth some money. Is that a problem? Is that even a question? You want a world without elephants? Huh? You want a world without elephants? We always had elephants. They'd just be dead elephants. You're a dumb and stupid man, Denmark. I'm just trying to make small talk to you. You don't have to call me dumb. Sergeant. 
should go over to Magnus' cell and stay there until their arrival to report. I guess I got to go. I guess this big old dumbbell ought to go looking on the magnet, I guess. Leave huh? now, Sergeant. <laughs>
understand, don't you, that I want everything to be quiet? I don't want any noise. I want to be able to hear the sound of my own voice. When you leave, my understanding is I never have to see you again. The reporter, the one who was here yesterday, she's coming in to see you again. Naturally, it's up to you whether or not you want to speak with her. Sorry about what I said.
help his bed. <laughs> Maybe you should go check on him. In a report, is that hard? Nothing's hard, really, if you know how to do it. No, I mean like on your family and everything, your kids. I don't have any kids. What about your husband? I don't have a husband. Not enough time, that kind of thing? No, there's time. Men just don't like me, I guess. That can't be true. You on a fishing expedition here, Sergeant? Yeah, well, I was just bringing it up because, well, you know, it's just that I've been working a lot of hours, a lot of overtime, but after tomorrow, you know, I'll be all freed up again. And? And I was wondering if maybe you'd like to go out or do something. You're very sweet. Really. Did they treat you well coming through the prison? The protesters out in front gave me a harder time. They are a rough group. I'll see that you do that, okay? Will you think about what I said? Mm, I will. I'll go see if the prisoner's going to talk to you. Is he all right? He's asleep, lying down underneath the window. I'll call you if I need you. I'll be right outside. What'd you bring for me today? Dirty movies? <laughs> Tomorrow I'll bring you a real girl. Yeah? Make it early. But I did bring you this. Not enough, man. I was afraid it was all I could get in. He didn't even bother me at all. My throat is so red, so raw. If I drink this, I don't think I could take the pain. You drink it. Mm. How are you feeling? Take the bottle. No, no thank you. You don't drink? Not anymore. Why do people do that? Why did you do that? Do what? Why did you have to tell me you don't drink anymore? What, you used to drink so much you can't do it anymore? I don't know. People don't like to be thought of as unhip, as uncool, like they haven't been around. You've been around? No, I just used to drink too much. What'd you drink? Beer. I was a beer drinker. Nothing like that, huh? Cold glass of beer? <sighs> Nothing quite like 15 of them either. <laughs> Nobody really in particular. 
Hitler fucked me over. You just fucked up on your own. Yep. Nothing failed you. The system didn't fail you. Your schools. I had the same books, same fucking teachers, same courses. Shit, guys, I went to school with have their own houses by now. Do you think you were born a murderer? Nah. Then why did you do it? Why did I kill that lady? Do you feel like a murderer? I would, I suppose, if I had any great guilt about it. What did you feel when you shot her? <coughs> she was just some bitch driving a fancy truck. She rubbed me the wrong way, that's all. That's it? That's all there is to it. Why do you think you can just take a life like that? That there's no real consequence? You mean because I got no guilt? They're killing me tomorrow, which is a very real consequence. And the only reason they do that is because they know, and I know, the cost of one human being is cheap. It's the cheapest thing. So I kill her, they kill me. And it's all done without a great deal of enthusiasm. There's a grain of truth. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. So you, um, haven't been sleeping? I don't think so. I don't think I slept. I had a dream, though. What did you dream about? I dreamt I got new shoes. Why do you think it was a dream if you haven't been sleeping? Well, I don't have any fucking new shoes now, do I? <laughs> <laughs> so you're really not going to tell me why, are you? What do you mean, why? Why you became a person capable of murder. No matter what I say, you're just going to blame it on my parents. We're not even going to get started on that bullshit madness. I don't want to hear any crap about how your father had no backbone or how you were the apple of your mother's eye. I want to know why you chose to be a failure. <laughs> chose to be a failure? You got it all wrong. Equating being able to murder doesn't mean you're a failure. You couldn't live by the rules. You didn't play the game. I see now. I see. See what? I don't see shit. <laughs> I'm bored with this. I'm bored with you. You kicking me out? <clears throat> Time goes by too quickly when you're here. Do you feel sorry for yourself? If you really want to know, I thought it was all going to work out. I did. I don't want you to go. There isn't anything you can tell me. Were you ever in love? Fuck you. When was the first time you got laid? You want to know the truth about this? I want you to tell me the truth you haven't told anybody else. I was 20 years old. I met some older woman at a bar. She fucked me, you know what I'm saying? She wanted to fuck me a hell of a lot more than I wanted to fuck her. She made me wear rubber. Yeah, what else? There's nothing else. Hmm. There's something else to the story. She fell asleep. I took the scum bag off and came inside her anyway. Did you feel as though you had to do that? Were you angry at her for falling asleep? What kind of question is that? How old are you now? What do you mean, was I angry? How long ago was that story? How old were you when you first got fucked? I was nine. Yeah, right. By my father. Yeah? Well, by the looks of you, I'd say he had good taste. That was an obscene thing to say. What do you want me to say, huh? You want me to feel bad for you? You want me to feel bad for your old man? Say he was sick? Is that why you want to know about me? About my parents? Christ Almighty, your father was a bag of shit and you turned out all right. My father was a good and decent man. And I turned out like this. I shamed him. I drove him into a hole. He tried and he tried and he tried. And I came out like this. Why is that, huh? Can you ever in a million years tell me why that is? I don't know why that is. And it makes me crazy. I'm sorry for my questions. Let me have a cigarette. What? Let me have a cigarette. There's nothing worse than death row, man. There's no thing worse than this death house. I always need room to move. You know, I always need room to work. When you were young, what was it that you wanted to be? 
I was gonna own a farm. Me and my friend were gonna own a farm. You had lived in the city though, hadn't you? Not the country. We had a book in school. A social studies book. And there were these two kids, right? One of them American, one of them Indian. But not like an Indian from India, like an like Apache or something, you know. And they were in school together, and they met years later after traveling the country. The whole place. The book made the land look so clean, the people so good. And those two guys remained friends no matter what. Oh, ah, that's where the dream came from. What had happened to them? I don't remember. That book made it seem like no matter what, you're going to be all right. You remember those days? School days? Yeah, when you were young. Not so good, really. Small, meaningless things. Fighting. Forgetting to pull my zipper up when I came out of the bathroom. Where in the city did you live? I lived just outside by the tracks. The train would come by, put pennies on the tracks, and flatten them out like they were made of paste. What else? Jesus Christ, you get me talking like this and there isn't anything else. There's nothing. There's nothing that's there, you know what I mean? So many times I'm at a job or something, you know? And I just feel like I gotta run. You know, I just wanna break out. I just wanna burst apart like I can feel. Like it's possible to feel your skin keeping you trapped. And there's nothing. I just wanna burst apart. Because you just gotta feel something. Because too much of the time, you never get to feel anything at all. Even when I was feeling bad. Even though I was feeling blue all over my room, can you believe this? I never got to feeling bad enough. I got to the point where I wanted to go out the window. I wanted to go out the fucking window and fall and hit and just live. And that pain forever. This room is just... It just shows me that... Everything is nailed down. The air never moves. The lights stay the same. The temperature stays the same. The colors stay the same. My clothes, my clothes stay the same. I mean, you can't tell me this isn't strange. There's no other place like it. Nowhere. But did you see? Did they tell you what they did for me? They got me a change of clothes. A t-shirt for every one of my days left. Red? White, blue. What do you think about that, huh? Is that sick? <laughs> so what do you think I'm supposed to do here now? You come in here and you ask questions as if that matters. Don't you understand? Don't you finally understand that all of your questions, all of your study gets you nowhere? Shouldn't I at least try to understand? Understand what? The only thing for you to understand is I've decided there's no reason for any of this. So are you going to tell me then that shooting that woman was something like an accident? A stupid mistake? That you didn't mean it? I shot that bitch. I shot her because with her fucking things. She was trying to tell me and everybody else that she was better than me. When she cut me off, she was saying that her business was more important than mine. And she had the right away, and I didn't. I can't. I just don't see how I can go up there every fucking day and be blown up a thousand fucking times. You killed her because you knew she was better than you. And you killed her. Shot her in cold blood because in your cheap, stupid, ignorant way, you didn't know how else to solve that problem. You're inarticulate. You're on No. Then you tell me what it is, then. I don't know what I mean. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You killed that woman because you've made yourself incapable of getting better. Because you were once young and strong and pure and you thought you had the whole road ahead of you. You thought you could just ignore the obstacles. But you can't. You're not that smart. You couldn't improve your life, so you do what the most worthless of us do. You make it worse. You take it out on somebody else. That's a lie. That's a filthy lie. That's the lie that kills people. That's the lie that killed me. Oh, so tell me that you killed her because you had too much freedom? It wasn't freedom. I just never had any respect. I wish 
she would help her instead. No matter who I killed, it would all be exactly the same. Mr. Denmark!
raped her, killed her. He got up. We screwed up a little bit. You should have learned something from all that felt. How so? We should issue every man in prison a kind of, uh, an escapee survival kit. A what? As each man enters prison, give him some money, a set of clothes, I don't know what else, uh, maybe a credit card. And? And Phil, that way, when these bastards break out, they won't cause any unnecessary mayhem. <laughs> See, if they can take care of themselves, they won't get desperate and hurt other people. Am I right? It's worth a thought, Duncan. <laughs> You're a saint, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not something you strive for, but compassion is the key. So, let's go ahead and kill this asshole while we can. <laughs> Denmark! Denmark! What? What time is it? It's 6.30. Did you let me go to sleep? Why'd you let me go to sleep? It's almost time to go, Jimmy. <laughs> Anybody know what happened to
to the roof.
It's Rothstein, since you enjoy such lofty status here. Do you have any questions before we begin, either on or off the record? Did he say anything? He said goodbye. You're kidding me. He said goodbye. Well, so much for any words of wisdom from the dying man. I didn't expect you to be so hard, Miss Rothstein. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, what 
happened to the roof? There's a hole in the roof. We're aware that there's a hole in the roof. We're very conscious of it. <laughs> We're going to find out exactly, and I mean exactly what caused it. You don't know? Oh, we know what caused it. It's just that we need to do further study before we can announce to the entire community what it was. Uh, is that it? So short and sweet. Uh, thank you, everybody. What's going to happen to the body? If that's all. Uh, can his organs be donated? Please, everybody. Have you heard of anyone else following your example? That's it.